Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to run DOSBox. So the very mention of DOSBox to a lot of people is a bit of a taboo area for a lot of people. Uh, the very mention of terminals and typing in commands, it's very confusing to some people, but it's actually not that hard. And to people watching this uh, who subscribe to me, who's not sure what DOSBox is, it's an emulator which emulates DOS games. So uh, DOS was an operating system on Windows systems, retro nowadays, uh, Windows systems such as Windows uh, 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, and even up to Windows XP, which was my first experience of Windows back in the day. So I'm going to show you how to download this, where to download your games from. So this is going to be a very easy guide and I think on YouTube there's a lot of unnecessary complicated guides but I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you. So if you like the idea of playing DOS games on your PC in 2023, check this one out. Okay, as always, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit notifications, press subscribe, and also like. It will get you up-to-date content as I upload it daily, and I cover different platforms, especially front-end systems such as Retrobat, RetroArch, Playnight, Batacera. I also cover Android Emulation 2, as well as Raspberry Pi. So first of all, what we're doing today then is we're gonna grab the emulator itself, and I'm running Windows 11 for this. So we're gonna head over to DOSBox, just type into your search engine DOSBox, but I'll leave a link in my description for this. Uh, so we've got DOSBox and 86 emulator, okay. So from here, we're gonna go to Downloads. And just go to downloads now, and this is going to take you to SourceForge. So this is going to open up SourceForge. You've got a little countdown. This isn't going to take too long. And after this is done, we'll then get the download itself. And here we go. So if you've got Windows 11, possibly even Windows 10, you might get a little blocked, dangerous window up here just here. Just go to keep. This is a very trusted file. Okay, so once we've downloaded that, let's just install it. So I'm going to left click on the installer. And if you get a pop up about making changes to your device, just press yes. And here we go. So let's just minimize this. What we're going to do is install this. So just press next. And we got option here of creating a desktop shortcut. So for easy access, I recommend just making sure this one's checked. And we're going to go to next and make a note of this as well. This is where it's being installed. So that's going by default into my program files folder on my C drive. And that's times 86. So let's press install on this. And it's really that quickly. So we can press close now. And if I find my C drive, so if I go into my C drive, program files times 86. And here we go, this is where this is installed to, DOSBox. So that's it. So we know where it's installed and we've also got the shortcut. So let's just open up DOSBox, double left click. And here we go. So we got two windows up here. here. Uh, the status window tells us what's going on in the background of DOSBox. And DOSBox just here, this is where we're gonna issue some commands and get our games running. So I'm going to show you where to get some games from, and this is my Abandonware. So I'll leave the link in my description for this one as well. But basically, it's just a simple task of just going to platform whilst we're on my Abandonware, scrolling down, and we'll come across DOS. And as we can see, it covers a lot of different systems on my Abandonware. And I use this site a lot for videos that I do. So we're going to just click on DOS. And this is going to give you a lot of DOS games, as we can see. Uh, some of these you might have to pay for, in which case it's going to have a little money bag. But anyways, what I have done for this is by just typing in Batman. We can see Batman, we got a DOS version of this. And the great thing of this, if we got classic games we used to play as kids, uh, say for me, for example, I used to play Batman the movie on Commodore 64. Uh, it's nice to see these games, how they looked uh, on different platforms such as DOS. So 
I'm going to download this Batman game. If I scroll down, we can download this here, and it's a tiny file. So we're just going to go to download, and here we go. So we got Batman DOS N English. So I've got my game on my desktop, and just to make a note, that's in zipped compression at the moment. So what I'm going to do next is actually create a folder to put my DOS games in. So next up, what we're going to do is create a new folder so we can access our games a lot easier whilst we're in DOSBox. So what we're going to do is go to the C drive. So this PC, C drive, and within my C drive, I'm going to just create a new folder. So right click, new folder. And I'm going to just call this one DOS. And that's all lowercase. Now in DOS, what I'm going to do is drag in my Batman game. So just drag that inside of your newly created DOS folder. And then let's extract this. So I'm going to right click on Batman. And I'm using WinRAR. But if you're using 7-Zip or WinZip, extraction tools generally work the same. So WinRAR extracts here. And we can now delete that dot zip file. We no longer need that one. So let's take a look inside Batman the movie. We got lots of different files here, which is going to appear very alien to a lot of people. Uh, the file that we are looking for to use in DOSBox is the .exe. So whenever you download a DOS game, you're likely going to find an .exe, and that's executable. That's what we're going to launch within DOSBox. Okay, so everything's in place. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is set this window into a full screen mode. And I'm doing this by pressing Alt and Enter on my keyboard. And we can also exit this full screen mode by pressing Alt and Enter again. But I'm going to continue this in full screen. And first of all, what we're going to do is mount that directory called DOS, which I've just created. And to do this, just follow what I'm typing. So I'm typing in mount. C, C, and this one's a forward slash, and I'm typing in DOS. And now we can see drive C is mounted as the local directory. So what we're going to do next from here is enter the directory itself. So for this, I'm going to just type in C, and here we go. And as we can see, the Z or the Z is now transformed into C, which is good. We want this. And to enter this directory, the DOS directory, I'm going to just type in DIR. And here we go. Here's my directory, which I've just set up on my C drive. Now, let's execute this game. So what we're going to do is just type in CD. And then I'm going to space. And then I need to copy out where it says Batman. So I need to copy this exactly how it says. And to get the weird squiggly line you can see between Batman and the digit one, I'm just pressing tab on my keyboard. And as we can see by pressing tab, just delete one space. And we can see that squiggly line has now appeared. And if I type in one, press enter, what we're gonna do next is just type in DIR. And here we go. Here's all the files inside of my game, like I showed you just a minute ago. So if we remember, it was Batman.exe. So all I'm going to do to execute Batman, the game, is just type in Batman.exe and press Enter. And here we are. We're now inside of this DOS game. And as you can see, we got four different options how we want this game to look. I'm going to just type in 4 for VGA. And we've also got a selection of how we want to play this game just here. So I'm going to do this the traditional way and play this with my keyboard. So I'm going to press 1. And we got Jack Napier. So as we can see, Batman is walking left and right. And I'm operating this by pressing P and O on my keyboard. And by pressing Q, I'm then going up in space is my action button. If anyone knows this game, then you should know this version on C64 at least had music. So I'm going to close this down. 
and we're going to take a look at something else. So remember to exit your game through DOSBox. It's simply a case of pressing all and enter. Okay, so this time I'm going to download another game and we're going to go through this process once again with a couple of games in. So I'm going to go back over to my abandonware and a very popular platformer for DOS is Abuse. And this is a very good game. It's not bad. If I download this again, uh, we've also got ISO version of this. Now, I'll probably cover uh, running ISOs through DOSBox at a later date, but for now, I'm sticking with the very simplified version of using DOSBox. So just download the free megabyte version of this. And that's downloaded already, as we can see. And if we go into the abuse folder, we got a similar setup to Batman. So remember, it's the .exe that we're looking for, the executable. Which So I'm going to drag the abuse folder inside of that DOS folder once again, which I've created on my C drive uh, where Batman is. So just drag and drop this inside. And if you've not checked out Abuse, it's a very good game and uh, gets you using your cursor as well. So you'll see in a minute if you've not checked out this one yet. So we're going to open up DOSBox again. And we're going to issue those same commands again. So we first of all need to mount the C drive. So same as before. And of course, DOS so is actually specifically pointing to that DOS folder. And there we go, it's now been mounted again. And next up, I'm going to just type C to go into this. And there we go, it's now changed from Z or Z into C. And what I'm going to do now is simply type in DIR, which obviously stands for a directory. And now we can see abuse is also there alongside Batman. The XE to run for this, as we know, is abuse.exe. So let's actually go into the abuse folder itself. So to do this, I'm going to type in CD space. And then just literally copy what it says just here. Abuse, everything's in capitals. So abuse, enter. And now we got this selected. Type in DIR. And here's our files within that abuse game. And to run this, what I'm going to do now is actually type in abuse.exe, as we can see here. So abuse.exe and enter. So full screen mode is all and enter. Now for this particular game, it's a bit more up to date by about three or four years than the Batman game. So as we can see, this is running really well. Uh, I'm using cursor keys to control uh, Mr. Soldier, whoever his name is, and I'm using my mouse to aim towards the enemies and obviously left click to fire. So I'm just gonna save this. <laughs> So that's it, that's a very basic glimpse how to get DOSBox up and running with floppy disk games. Very, very easy to do. As you can see, it's just a case of creating that directory, say on your C job like I did, mounting that directory through using the DOSBox terminal, and then just go into your directory inside of DOSBox to find your games. And remember, it's always the .exe file we need to execute through DOSBox. 
So that's a very basic glimpse into it. And in the future, I'm gonna do a bit more work around this, showing you how to run CD-ROM based games. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming content. Like I say, I cover a number of different systems here on my channel. Also, check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. But until next time, stay retro.